everyone this is Iska the Stitch and Witch and today we have hiked all the way out to this beautiful place in a forest near my house in order to film a review for the one and only Glowwood Oracle cards. I am still relatively close to the road even though I'm quite a ways away from where my car parked so you are gonna hear traffic behind me unfortunately um, but all my usual quiet places were having events or had tons of people. The good weather brings everyone outside, right? So I had to find a different secluded spot to come and film for you today. So today we are gonna go into this lovely Oracle deck. I am going to tell you right off the bat that this was sent to me for free and I was requested to do a review for it, which I very gladly did. As you already know, I don't accept uh, decks or books for review unless I already think that they're going to be something that I will enjoy or that will be relevant to my channel. And so I have accepted this one and I am an affiliate of Glowwood now. So if you do end up liking this deck and you like what you see, then please go click the affiliate link down below uh, in the description box. You do need to use my coupon code, the Stitch and Witch, in order to get yourself 10% off this deck. However, if you end up really falling in love with it, I think that you will really like it. Because it is an affiliate link, I will make a small commission from each sale of the deck, and that would be great if you choose to shop my affiliate link. If you don't like affiliate links and you like the Globewood anyways, and you would just like to shop uh, from their website as it is, the link to that will also be down in the description so that you don't have to shop through my link. It's totally up to you. It does help my channel out. It does put a little money in my pocket, but we are talking a very little. So, without any further ado, let's get into this beautiful deck and what my thoughts are on it. So first things first, I am going to be showing you some b-roll that'll be like cutovers of my talking. I do want to commend Glowwood on this absolutely beautiful, hard, sturdy box, the well-made packaging and the obviously really comprehensive guidebook. The guidebook is hefty, it's definitely well made, and each card has a couple of pages worth of information uh, in the guidebook. It does give you the Latin name, the uh, type of car that it is, like whether it's an animal, plant, a fungi, etc. It does explain the symbols, which we will get into shortly, as well as any associations that it has. The description discusses the actual um, organism of the uh, subject of the card, and it also discusses sort of like what the meaning of the card is. Keywords at the end are what you can flip to if you really want just a quick and dirty little set of keywords about the card. You don't want to get into a whole big long spiel about the meaning of it. I do also love that the uh, deck comes with this lovely little drawstring bag that you can keep the deck in if you choose to instead of this really massive box because it is quite massive. To store that on my shelf with the rest of my decks would be kind of cumbersome, so I do intend to use the, um, the included bag myself. Um, I do want to make a note about the guidebook. If you are the type of person who likes to just pick up an oracle deck 
and start shuffling it and read with it, you are going to find it a bit of a struggle to read with glow wood. This is definitely a deck where you will need the guidebook because the titles on the cards are just that, titles. It tells you what the organism is. There are some symbols on the borders of the cards, which we will get into, and that sort of defines what type of uh, card, like what, what sort of like different associations and categories and things like that are on this particular uh, card. But in terms of gaining a whole bunch of wisdom about the organism and what it means from the visuals of the card itself, you're going to be very disappointed. This is not what this deck does at all. So let's get into sort of like the meat of this deck. First things first, in the guidebook, this does go quite a bit into detail about how to use these cards, why they were created, and then there are a ton of really beautiful spreads. All these spreads are original to the deck, they are relevant to the deck, and they obviously are designed to provide meaning using the cards themselves. These were obviously very thoughtfully well done, well written and crafted spreads. There is no Celtic cross here. There is no basic three card spread. There is none of that. There is also really wonderfully a spread for either the Northern or the Southern hemisphere. So Southern hemisphere witches, have no fear. You have been included in this deck. The level of detail to wholeness and the whole idea of there being an interconnected web for everything in nature has also factored in locality for witches of different places, which I am so happy about. There's also two magical practices that use this deck. One of them is the planting practice and one of them is the, consequently, pruning practice. This is a really great way to give sort of more beginner witches an idea of ways to use your decks for things other than just divination, which I think can be really challenging for some people at the beginning to imagine using a deck for something other than just getting answers to questions or doing a daily draw. When you are using the Glowwood, you get to have sort of like that extra holding hand in terms of how you can use the deck for more practical purposes as well. When it comes to the card descriptions themselves, it starts on page 63, and that does tell you right at the beginning um, in the book when it tells you like what's in a, uh, a glow wood card, which is really great. It sort of gives you the anatomy of how the cards are put together, how they're sort of designed to work in terms of all the extra information. By the way, if you're wondering what all that crashing in the background is, that's my dog. <laughs> I brought Noir with me into the forest because how could I not? and she is literally just like crashing through. <laughs> so you're gonna see her throughout this whole video. Being a happy, happy dog. She's already chewed apart several sticks and clamored over a ton of stuff. So yeah, there is a lot of uh, information about how the Glowwood cards are designed to work, sort of for quick and dirty readings, as well as for how you can really dive in deep with the card and not just get information about the card itself, but also about things that it might be associated with and things that it's connected with to sort of build out that uh, we are all connected, all of nature is connected sort of viewpoint, which I personally absolutely love. I love that they have really thought all of that sort of thing through. So let's take a look at some of these Glowwood cards, shall we? And let's sort of see how they are designed and what you can expect from a reading with a card. So we're gonna take the first card into consideration. This is the Alder card. The Alder card shows you in the guidebook that its Latin name is Alnus. And the type of card that it is, is a plant and specifically it is a tree. The symbols of this particular plant are, it's an early, it's an improver, it's a nourisher, pioneer, it is transient, and it is wet. And what that means by the symbols is that around the border, you're going to see a whole bunch of really beautiful symbols. And those symbols can be looked up in the back of the book on page 209 called Symbols. And the symbols 
show you all of the different things that that particular card is. So we know that this one, that it is in, that it is a nourisher. And the way that we know that is because we can see the symbol on the bottom of the card there. We can also see the wet symbol here that is the leaf surrounded by a water droplet. And then we can see other symbols as well along the top of the card. Those different symbols are a way for uh, you to sort of deepen your knowledge about that particular organism or type of soil and how it sort of broadens the meaning of the organism and the card itself. There are a whole bunch of different types of symbols that are on all of the different cards. And there are also um, sort of some uh, timelines as well for certain types of um, soils and plants and trees, not as much for the uh, organisms like the animals and the insects, but there are some for the different types of trees and soils and rocks because they come into play within the web of life and within the history and the timeline of how some things like in this earth were settled scientifically that you are able to sort of look up with this helpful little timeline in the back of the book. So we know that it is a pioneer tree. So alder would be right about here in terms of the timeline of how earth was sort of climatized and what its sort of um, role is in the forest as well. So alder is a pioneer tree. So if there is a forest fire or a clear cut, alder is probably gonna be one of those first trees that will settle back into a forest to sort of begin the process of creating the shade and adding the nitrogen to the soil that those longer, slower growing trees need and some of the conif coniferic trees need like spruces and pines and things like that. So the index is the most helpful thing that you will use in terms of navigating this guidebook. There is no index for um, some of the more scientific terms and what they mean. There is no sort of um, like extra helpful resources. There's no bibliography in the back of this guidebook. It is strictly for using the cards. I would perhaps really love it if Lisa came out with some sort of wrote a book sort of talking about how she believes everything is connected within nature. And, and so I would sort of love to hear her take on it, sort of a, her own version of a braiding sweet grass or that sort of thing. I think she could, just from reading her guidebook already, I think she would be really good at writing that type of book and making the forest feel even more alive and connected the way that I feel when I read someone like Robin Wall Kimmerer. So I would, I would love to see what else Lisa has in store in the future because I think it could be really beautiful. Um, so my, some of my last thoughts that I want to make about this uh, particular deck is a couple of the cons. So as all of you guys know, I'm a very big environmentalist. I try as much as possible in my everyday life to reduce my use of single-use plastics. So when I note them on decks, I am going to talk to you about them. So one thing that is huge in Glowwood's favor is something that I have mentioned on my channel at least a couple of times, and that is like when you buy a deck and it's plastic wrapped in shrink wrap on the outside, I get that that is there to protect the deck. There are uh, compostable cellulose uh, plastics that you can use to sort of like shrink wrap or wrap a deck in. And we have seen their use in decks like the Oak Ash and Thorn and Smoke Ash and Embers by the wonderful Three Trees Tarot. Those decks, that creator is sort of my gold standard for environmental considering or consideration when it comes to the creation of a deck. So we know that these things exist and we know that they are doable among some of the more indie decks. So I would have liked to see a compostable plastic wrapping used on the outside of this deck, but the deck inside where it was inset was wrapped in a paper band 
which obviously paper is one of the most recyclable materials that we have. So I was very happy to see that. There was another nick in Glowwood's favor, however, because within the deck there is an insert, which is great, um, but inside the cardboard is foam. And this is definitely not going to be recyclable by any stretch of the imagination. Um, and so it will end up at least one day in landfill. And that disappoints me. Uh, nowhere on this deck either was there any sort of indication that um, this deck was produced with uh, environmentally friendly practices or anything like that in consideration. Uh, there's no mention of things like vegetable inks or anything like that. It is obviously produced in a normal everyday printer. And while that's not my favorite, I definitely understand uh, the need for it at times to make the decks more affordable and more easy, more accessible in some ways. But I would really love to see some uh, other creators really pushing to make those a priority within the printing and the publishing industries at large. So all in all, I give this beautiful deck a four and a half out of five stars. The only reason it gets a half star off is for two reasons. One, there was only one moss in this deck. <laughs> I really wanted to see another type of moss uh, highlighted within this deck. The only one that's in here is fire moss, which is beautiful, but I would have loved to have seen some spangum or some club moss or something like that. I would have loved to see other mosses highlighted in this deck. So I'm wondering if Lisa is going to be coming out with um, another deck that might expand on some of these things already. Maybe a tarot deck where there's different types of plants and organisms highlighted for each of the 78 cards within the tarot system. That would be cool. Um, but the other half, the other reason why it gets a four and a half out of five stars is because I would have loved to seen a deck that is obviously such a big, beautiful celebration of everything to do with nature trying to use materials and practices that help to better preserve nature. However, as someone who lives in the 21st century and very much understands how capitalism and production and all this stuff works, it is something I understand is not always able to be done, particularly by, like this is by um, Emergent Plant Life, that is the producer uh, and the publishing company of this uh, deck, as well as a couple of other things. Um, I understand how it's not always feasible for smaller companies to do that because it can really take a huge nick out of the ability to make profits from it, find suppliers and printers and other things that align with that. But pushes for that from this company, I would love to see. Movements toward that in the future, I would love to see. To remember that these things, as beautiful as they are now, eventually are not going to be usable objects in the future. They are eventually going to have to end up somewhere. And it would have been nice to see that all of it would have been ecologically conscious materials that when it does start to decompose in landfill, wouldn't leave a lasting effect. Just wanted to quickly show you that this deck shuffles like a dream as well, whether you're a rifle shuffler or a hand over hand shuffler. My original video and audio of it got corrupted, so I had to do a little cut in here for you. But as you can see, I have small hands and this shuffles just beautifully. No problems at all here. So there you have it, you guys. I very much love my glow wood. I think it is a beautiful deck. I think it is going to move very close to the top of my Oracle favorites from here on out. And I do really recommend it. Again, if you are looking at this video and wanting to get yourself a copy of it, you can. But uh, yeah, if you would like to get yourself a copy of this deck, please head on over to the affiliate link down in my description box. Do use my code, the Stitch and Witch, to get yourself a 10% discount. And let me know what you think of this deck in the comments. If you already have it, please tell me about it and how you found using it. The draws that I have done with this deck, the actual reading process, I've only just done single card draws for now because right now, in my practice, that is all that I really feel called to do. 
they have been spookily, eerily accurate and definitely the sort of wisdom and advice that I needed to hear in that moment. And oh my goodness, have I loved this deck. It felt so right to come out to the forest here today to do this review of this deck. I really felt like I needed to be by some trees, by some lichen, by some moss, by the soil, by the animals and the birds in order to really do this deck justice for this particular review. And I'm so glad I made the effort to come out and hike here today. Honestly, I've been needing an excuse to get out into the woods anyways. And Glowwood, you gave me this excuse. So thank you so much. Thank you everyone for watching today's video. I do hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, subscribe, give it a thumbs up, and until I see all of you again, be wise, be brave, and be magical, my darlings.